Today we're going to look at getting started with RAD Image Editor. RAD Image Editor is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight WPF Control Suite for .NET XAML development. Telerik's RAD Image Editor is used to process images in Silverlight WPF applications with no dependencies on external APIs. It supports various image processing tools and effects like resize, contrast, brightness, hue, and saturation adjustments. Silverlight effects are used to execute heavy operations on the GPU for best performance. In this video, we're going to see how easy it is to get started with RAD Image Editor. We will begin by adding RAD Image Editor to a new Silverlight application and exploring the predefined UI. We will also take a look at customizing it for your applications by adding or removing tools that can be executed. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2010 and get started. So here we are once again inside of Visual Studio 2010 and I'm just going to go File, New, Project, and you should navigate through Visual C Sharp, Silverlight, and then RAD Control Silverlight application. And I'm just going to give this the name of RAD Image Editor Getting Started TTV and then hit OK. We are going to host the Silverlight application in a new website and we're also going to be using Silverlight version 5. Now that that's in place, you'll see the Project Configuration Wizard pop up next. And if we scroll down just a tad here, you'll see Telerik.windows.controls.imageEditor. If you place a check on that, you may notice that Telerik.windows.controls.input and Telerik.windows.controls has been added automatically to this project for us because the image control is dependent upon these other two controls. Finally, we can hit the Finish button here and Visual Studio will begin spinning up our new Silverlight 5 project. Once the project has finished spinning up, you'll notice that under References here, it has automatically added for us Telerik.windows.controls, Telerik.windows.controls.imageEditor, and Telerik.windows.controls.input. You may also notice that underneath the User Control, our Telerik XML namespace has been added for us as well. So adding the image editor is basically as simple as coming in here and adding Telerik RAD Image Editor UI and giving it a name. And you can see from our designer window here that it has already added a predefined UI for us. So by default, if we just went ahead and we run the application as is, so out of the box you can see we have an image preview here. And if we went ahead and we hit open here and we're looking in our temp directory, I could double click on an image and this for example is a PNG image. And of course you could zoom in or you could zoom out. We could also save this if we wanted to into another format such as PNG or BMP. But there's a lot of other functionality that's included. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So in order to get to some of the tools that's built into the control, we'll need to come back underneath our first tag and I'm just going to paste in our Telerik RAD Image Editor UI dot image tool selection. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop in some of the image tools that comes with this control out of the box. So as soon as I just pasted in a couple of these new image tool items, you'll notice that the XML namespace has not been defined. We can fix that by coming back up underneath our Telerik here and just pasting in those namespaces. So you'll see we have one called Tools and this is mapped to our Telerik.windows.media.imaging.tools and then our commands, these are routed commands and they are mapped to our telerik.windows.media.imaging.imageEditor commands.rooted commands. So if we scroll down here you'll see that this is an easy way for us to add a lot of additional functionality. So we've added in a transform. We've added in resizing. 
We've added in rotating, different degrees. We've added in the ability to flip the item horizontally, or vertically, or even crop. So I'm going to come back underneath this and we'll finish adding our tag here. And if we go ahead and we run the application now, you can see all of the built-in features that comes with this control. So again, we'll go ahead and we'll load an image. So I've just loaded a sample image here. You can see we can resize, and the image is resizing. We can reset. We can also preserve the aspect ratio. We could do a canvas resize. We could even rotate 90 degrees to 180 to 270 to our round corners. We know how our developers love rounded corners. Let me rotate that back around. And then, of course, you could flip horizontally or vertically. You can also crop if you wanted to as well. And you could save this image if you wanted to in PNG or BMP format. And we also keep a stack of the last operations. So we could hit undo a couple of times and we can see the navigation stack of what we just went through. So let's go ahead and add a couple more features. So underneath our image tools section, I'm just going to paste in a few more things here that we can use to enhance our application. So we're going to add a hue shift, saturation, contrast, invert colors, and sharpen, and then a blur effect. Go ahead and we run our application again here. We can see that they've been added here for adjust and then effects. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load that same sample image that we've been using in our previous samples here. And we can see the hue shift here. We can also go to saturation and we can toggle the saturation. The contrast, of course, for brightness. And then we can invert the colors. We'll just change that back. We have two built in effects as sharpen, and of course, you can select the amount you want to sharpen there. And then finally, we have an effect that's blur. And as you can see, the image has become blurred. So thank you very much for watching and please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements. Thank you.